So the Samsung Galaxy A55 is Samsung's latest mid-range smartphone. Its launch price in the UK was around 440 while the Samsung Galaxy flagship the S24 is nearly double the price. But just because it's twice as much does that make the S24 twice as good or is the smart money better spent on the Samsung Galaxy A55? Well, it all depends on several factors, some of which you should definitely think about and some of which maybe you couldn't care less about. So I know what you want answers and the truth is what you'll get here. And there is a couple of very important differences that if you don't know about before spending your money could end up being a very costly mistake for you. But first let's run through the essential stuff that everybody needs to know before buying a new phone like what's in the box. The unboxing experience is not out of this world, it's pretty simple. It's the phone a USB-C to C cable and some paperwork, no charger. The optimal charging speeds for both devices is 25 watt. Ideally, you'd want a PD power delivery 3.0 charging brick. The official Samsung charging brick with the cable on Samsung.com at the time of this video is currently priced around PS20. And the first big difference between the two phones is the Samsung Galaxy S24 does support 15 watt wireless charging and also reverse wireless charging at 4.5 watt 5 watt. So you can put your Galaxy Buds or your watch on the back of the phone and charge it up. The A55 doesn't support wireless charging at all. But if you're the tough person who never uses it anyway, this won't be a deal breaker for you. When you compare these two galaxies side by side, the first thing you'll notice is the A55 does have thicker bezels all the way around. And it's also a slightly larger phone. The screen to body ratio on the A55 is 86%. And the screen to body ratio on the S24 is 90%. There's also a weight difference between the two phones. Naturally, the bigger phone weighs a bit more 46 grams heavier to be precise. And the A55 has a slightly wider profile than the S24. On the back of the A55 is almost identical to the S24. So if look is something you care about, you don't really have to pay more for that iconic Samsung Galaxy style. Because you do get it here on the A55 at half the price and you'll be happy to know that the frame on the A55 is not plastic, it is in fact aluminum. The S24 is also aluminum, but a more robust variety of it. It is actually armor aluminum too, which offers better drop and scratch resistance. So if you don't like to rock a case on your phone, this upgraded material could be important for you. But if you're the type of guy or girl who instantly throws on a protective case, well then maybe like the rock says, it doesn't matter what type of aluminum it is. And here's a big win for the Galaxy of 55. The SIM tray allows for two 5G SIMs or one SIM and an NSD card up to one TB. With the S24, the memory is what it is and the price jumps between the memory sizes are more expensive than SD cards and the advantage of having an SD card on the A55 is that you can transfer and backup data to the SD card and then you can just put that SD card into your computer to transfer. Files across when needed. And while we're on the topic of file transfers, the USB-C ports on these devices may look exactly the same but they are because not all USB-C ports are created equal. The A55 actually uses a uses C 2.0 port and the S24 has the newer USB 3.2. And this is also a display port and even though this upgraded USB-C port doesn't offer an advantage in charging speeds, the S24's data transfer speeds by the wire will be significantly faster. Let's talk about Samsung's display. Samsung is the best in the business when it comes to phone screens. They even make the display for the iPhone. So as you would expect both up much here. However, there are some differences of course. The screen size says 6.6 .6 inch on the A55 and 6.2 inch on the standard Galaxy S24. Of course, there is the plus model as well, which is a bigger display closer to the A55. But between these two, the screen resolutions are the same which naturally makes the S24 panel a little bit more pixel dense because it is smaller but side by side the detail difference really isn't that noticeable. Then, 
Both support 120Hz refresh rate and both have a HDR10 plus rating and in regular lighting conditions it's hard to see a difference but there are three important things you need to know about the Galaxy S24 screen. First of all it's an LTPO mode meaning it can control and adjust the refresh rate down to 1Hz when needed which makes it more power efficient. It's also considerably brighter, the A55 tops out at 1000 nits which is very respectable but the peak brightness on the S24 is 2600 nits which is bright enough to give you a sun turn hold on this something different and the third difference is the glass. On top of the display both have very premium Gorilla glass from Corning with the A55 using Victus Plus and the S24 using a slightly newer Victus 2. The difference is not massive and actually completely irrelevant if you plan to put a screen protector on it but at least now you know the S24 glass is ever so slightly more robust but to me this really isn't the feature that you'll want to spend all that extra money for. Both phones use in display biometric fingerprint scanners and they are very quick but there is a difference in the technology used. The A55 uses the classic optical fingerprint method that shines a light up through the screen to scan your fingerprint. However, the S24 uses Qualcomm's ultrasonic scanner which uses vibrations to read your fingerprint. It's more advanced, arguably more secure and is slightly quicker. Okay, everyone loves a good photo and especially a good photo of themselves and Samsung knows this and that's why they've upgraded the sensor on the A55 selfie camera. It uses a 32 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.2, a wide angled lens and the S24 uses a 12 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture. Now having more megapixels doesn't necessarily mean better results every time. Both selfie cameras are also capable of 4K video up to 60 frames per second. Second, so that's pretty impressive. The rear cameras look the same on the surface, but they're actually very different. Although primary camera is actually identical, they both use the same 50 megapixel sensor f1.8 aperture 24mm and lens equivalent and both support optical image stabilization. The ultra wides both are 12 megapixels but they are different sensors and they also have different optics. The A55 actually has a slightly wider field of view in comparison to the S24. The third camera is the biggest difference between the two. The S24 has a 10 megapixel telephoto camera and the A55 in its place has the opposite of that, it's a 5 megapixel macro camera. So this is definitely something to consider. Do you prefer better close-up photography or do you prioritize taking photos from further away? The Galaxy A55's video quality tops out at 4K 30 frames per second whereas the S24 maxes out at 8K 30 frames per second and it does support HDR10 plus and I am working on a camera comparison between these two so keep an eye out for that. Now let's talk about the board, the power and speed the A55 has an impressive 5000M Akea battery compared to the S24 is 4000M IH battery charge speeds are similar but because the A55 has that larger battery it would take a tiny bit longer to reach 100%. The bigger battery isn't necessarily an instant win for the A55 because there are other things that can affect battery. So guys, what do you think about these two phones? Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you guys for watching this one. See you in the next one.